it's time to declutter your living room. I'm gonna show you how you can use a device like a PlayStation 5 and game in any room that you want that's quite far away from the bedroom area where my kids sleep. So there's no chance that I can wake them up when you have one of those late night gaming sessions. What if you're not a gamer? What if you have a party or a sporting event and you're watching it in the living room and you need to go to the kitchen and you can have the same actual broadcast on both in sync. I've been waiting years to get my hands on an HDMI matrix. And today I'm gonna to show you the M Hub in action in my smart home. We're gonna talk about the benefits of the HDMI matrix, how it actually works, what my setup is. Stick to the end as I'm gonna show you how you can control the HDMI matrix with Home Assistant. And now, let's roll the intro. The guy from HD Anywhere sent me over this demo unit, four by one plus one, which means four inputs, an Apple TV, a setup box, a PlayStation 5, and a Chromecast, in my example, one local HDMI output, so that's my living room TV, and one remote output, thanks to this little receiver that you can see over here. And all this works thanks to CAT6 wiring. So why should you even bother to get this? First of all, decluttering your living room is a big deal and it's gonna really put you up there with the partner acceptance score. Having a clean TV and a clean screen with just a sound bar underneath, it's such a big thing and it's really appealing to a lot of people. Having all of your devices somewhere else or in one location and being able to have them all around the house, that's really cool too. Also, it will save you some money because you don't really necessarily need to buy multiple copies of the same thing. So imagine how difficult it is to get a PlayStation 5. What if you wanted a PlayStation 5 in your living room and in your bedroom, for example? Yes, you could just unplug it and move it, but having this system really makes it foolproof. The one obvious thing that I have to state at this point, you can't actually game on two different games or you can't watch two different movies from the same Apple TV, for example. If you want to do that, you're going to need two devices, there's no way getting around that. Another interesting point for the young parents out there is the fact that by not having these devices and they're quite expensive devices around, there is no risk that things get unplugged or discs get damaged. So that's great. Also great for cleaning and just keeping the space looking larger and just tidier. Other thing that I love personally is the fact that you can watch the same thing everywhere. Another interesting use case, if you have a little bit older kids that are watching TV and you want to know what they're watching, you can actually switch the local TV in the room that you are, sync it back to the same source and you can find out exactly what they are really watching on that TV. With the M Hub itself, you not just get the hardware, but you get a lot of the software that sits behind you you get access to an app. The U-Control app, thanks to infrared transmitters and receivers, it allows you to communicate and basically control all of your devices in one place. So the main takeaway is that the app is able to remove all of the remote controls. Let's jump into the screen now and let me show you how I'm using this device. In here, you can see my before media. So this was before me getting this unit in. So we have a main television in the living room and a second television over here in the kitchen and an Apple TV and a PlayStation 5 connected to this over here. So obviously these are connected with HDMI and they all get uh, cat cables for the networking. So this is the as is situation. So I couldn't game from this room and I couldn't watch the Apple TV. What I could do, obviously I could use for example the LG built-in smart media functionality but I was way slower, for example, than using an Apple TV. Uh, and I really needed to buy another Apple TV and put it behind here uh, to do that. So as you can see from this picture, we have the M Hub Mini. How this works, we have the M Hub Mini over here, which is the main unit, and we have a receiver unit, which sits at the television entrance. And we'll have a nice wiring diagram, and I'm gonna explain that in more detail. But the idea is that the PlayStation 5 and the Apple TV connect up into this device, this device has an HDMI out to the um, TV. Then there's a, a CAT cable that goes from here up to this device over here behind the TV. And then this is connected via HDMI. In the future, I want to upgrade to the four x three plus one unit, 
So this unit is a rack mountable unit and I'm going to be placing all of my other devices in my rack. So I've got uh, Apple TV. I've also got this new setup box, which we'll be reviewing. This is for me to watch a Italian TV and we've got PlayStation 5, right? So all of this is going to be connected up and then we're going to have the cat cables running all around the house at the two or three TV spots. Um, and then we can be able to, basically we're able to connect them up via HDMI. So that's one, two, three outputs. Now, if you had the television quite close or if you could run an HDMI cable uh, from the rack into a TV, that's actually a fourth display that you can have with this model. Now, there are many other models if you check the website to scale this even bigger. Cool, let's look at the wiring diagram in detail. Over here, we've got the setup for the four by one plus one. So starting from the left-hand side, we have four HDMI inputs. So one, two, three, four. And we can see we've got three devices connected up in this diagram. All of these devices are connected up with an HDMI cable. The better the quality, the better it's going to be. The IR receivers, you can see them connected up on the three jacks on top of the HDMI. So this one is for number one, and this one's for number two, right? So they need to be in sync. The second thing, is we've got an HDMI that's gonna go from the A port into your television. So you're gonna have this unit close to your main entertainment center when, where everything else is basically. And you'll have that in, you have a little IR dongle over here. And if you've got an AVR unit, you can see there's a wiring over here for that with the digital stereo out for your sound. And with your router, you can actually get uh, Wi-Fi. So this can connect to Wi-Fi or it can be hardwired with an IP, uh, normal sort of IP Ethernet cable. This Ethernet cable over here is the HD base T output, to not to be confused with the IP one. So don't get this mixed up. And you can't have a switch, for example, feeding this in and feeding this device. This needs to be completely separate and needs to have its own run, preferably of the best quality CAT 6 or superior that you can actually get. But if you have a quite short run, you might get away with it, but really uh, get the best uh, connection you can if you're wiring this up from scratch. If not, use what you have. So run this over here to the display receiver. The display receiver, this is also power, power over ethernet. So this will be powered up thanks to this connection. And then we have our IR transmitter here for the remote control. And we have also a, the voice control. So we have the HDMI that's gonna bring in the um, screen and the whole top quality that we can actually get with this device. And all of this is powered by the app, the U-Control app that I mentioned previously. Now let's jump into the next diagram. This diagram over here is what I'm looking to implement in the future. So I'm looking to move all of my devices in a rack. So similar, similar idea. We have four source inputs. So we can have up to four devices connected inside to this device. We have one local zone, which is zone A over here. We have three zones. So we're gonna have three receivers, similar to what we had before, but this time there's gonna be three runs. One, two, three. We have an optical out, as you can see. So it's gonna power our AVR system. So if you have, if you have the AVR system in the rack itself, with speaker cables going around the house, then this is where you're connected in. You have the hub IR. So this is for the little remote control that comes with the hub, allows you to switch things over, but you can really just use the app. You don't really need a remote control. And here you go, you have the IP in. So this is for the if internet connectivity and it's all powered up by the U control. Now, if you're an installer and you want to install this, or if you want someone to manage your own installation, you can actually, get a pro to install this for you. And with that comes some sort of cloud management. So what they can do is they can do certain actions remotely to help you um, configure your device. I think you also get an extra warranty. I'll put, put down some details over here, but that's really up to you. You can also turn this cloud feature off and all will be good. You still need an email address to register if you are looking to do that. Now, if you're getting value out of this video, remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel to get my media tour when I actually get that four by three by one up and running in the rack. Now it's time for the Home Assistant part. HD Anywhere provide an API that is used exactly for people like us that want that 
extra customization and uh, control of our own device. If you've never worked with APIs before, there's another video that I'm gonna link at the end of this video that will give you a broader and a more uh, in-depth approach of how to use APIs into Home Assistant. But these are the main things that I will be doing with Home Assistant. I will show you how to get all of the information. I'm gonna show you a sample script that I built off that API call and why do I use it and what this actually unlocks for your smart home. Jump into something like Visual Studio Code or File Editor, scroll down and find your scripts.yaml. So this is the script that I'm using in Home Assistant. Now Home Assistant allows you to do many things. What you can do, this is just a sequence of things that can happen. Just for your knowledge, you can actually do sequences in the U-Control app itself which is very cool, but I prefer to use a home assistant as that what I use day in and day out. This script is really waking up the television, sending a wake on land send magic packet using its MAC address, which you can find from your router. The second thing it does is switches that TV onto HDMI, which is the input from that receiver. Second thing I'm doing, I'm doing a rest underscore command and that REST command is sending that API statement and I've called it HDMI Anywhere Kitchen Apple TV. And then at the end, I'm just doing a Apple TV command. So let's delve into this REST underscore command and where we can figure that. For, to get to it, you need to go to the configuration.yaml. Once in the configuration.yaml, now search for REST underscore command. If you haven't got it, then you can just simply add this. But I already had it, as you can see, because I was using a kiosk command specifically for my wall panel that I uh, set up previously. But the HDMI Anywhere Apple TV specifically does this. It goes for this IP address, which is the IP address of the device, which I would advise you put it on a fixed IP address so it doesn't change. And then it's just slash API slash control switch. And then here we have two symbols. We have B, so we have A, B, C, D and one, two, three, four. Now ABCD is going to be your television. So that's going to be your output. So if you're, my output A is the living room and output B is a kitchen and my input one is the um, Apple TV in this example. So that's why this is called kitchen Apple TV. Same thing for the living room, it's the reverse. The thing that changes is the letter. So instead of B, it's A because A is what I've assigned to living room. So that's what you need to find out what you've assigned. Basically you have A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, depending on what M hub unit you have, to be fair. So in my example, I will have only two outputs with this device. And the same thing with PS5. So you can see all the four combinations that I've created. And I also created one for Chromecast and one for the Italian TV, which is set up at the input number four, because I have four inputs and two output. To give you a little bit of a glimpse of how this actually works, I set up these little buttons over here and the ultimate goal when I finished up this little dashboard is that all of these will control my HDMI anyway, my TV and can turn things on and off wherever I want. If you are interested in that sort of content, remember to like this video, drop me a comment down in the section down below. If you want to learn even more how I built my smart home, then check the courses that I've actually got on my platform in the description down below. I'm sure they will help you out on the journey to build your ultimate smart home. And now I'm gonna leave you with a video talking a little bit more about APIs. So you can learn and leverage APIs and this awesome piece of kit. I'll see you in the next one.